So the idea is this. So remember last time we looked at this right here, um, how you can take uh, specific structures and take those structures and add it to an evolutionary tree oh, and then be able to show relatedness, okay? And one of the things Joshua learned last time is that actually whales are um, fairly closely related to pigs um, because of what's called the double pole of the ankle, okay? There's a specific bone within the ankle and um, humans actually only have a single pole of the ankle. Now, tell me, does, if, if we put a, if we put a line right here, like that node right there, that vertical branch, okay? Does whatever this vertical branch represents, does the lamprey have? No. 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 Does the human have? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. Why? Okay, remember, every time we go up with this step, oh. everything before that oh, step, yeah, yeah, yeah. that creature has. So this would be like something like backbone, and this was what? Uh, four limbs, and this was amniotic egg, and this was body hair, right? And then double pull the ankle. Okay, we also did it where we were like this, where we had the lamprey. Right, and we said, okay, the lamprey, they had four limbs, four limbs, and then we had eggs, and we had hair. Wrong four. Hair. Yeah, the, the forward area. Four. Oh, I thought you said four. Hair, and then the ankle bone, the specific about the ankle bone itself. Okay. So you can look at it both ways, but again, it's all showing this relationship. And remember, the idea is that as you go to the right, time is progressing. Okay. Um, so today we're going to do the same idea, but today we're going to look at the lineage of hominids. So y'all gave me examples of hominids being gorillas and chimpanzees and humans and um, Homo sapiens and Homo erectus and the one I can't pronounce. What's it called again? Australopithecus. Australopithecus. We're actually going to look at him today. Um, Okay, so we're going to look at these, these ideas so we can study these relationships within the hominid. Okay, okay I'm going to give you a bunch of cards. Um, they're actually in front of your table right now. Um, I want you, first off, so take the cards. The first thing I want you to do is go through the cards, and, and I want you to do two things. First off, I want you to look at the cards and uh, find some similarities and find some differences. And then I want you to either, you can do, you can do both or you can do either, um, Either look and see if you can find like a, 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 a developmental phase, okay? So like which one came first, which one came next, which one came next? Or at least start to say, okay, I think this skull is from this organism. Now obviously these are all what types of? These are all hominids, okay? So these are all hominids. These are all examples of hominid skulls. And I want you to, again, take a look at them, do some similarities and differences, and then see if you can either order them in time, or if you can determine what they are, okay? And I, I just divide them in half, so half the, half the room has some and half the room has some. So what do y'all think number one is? You think maybe it's a big gorilla thing? You think it's what? Maybe a caveman? No, no, like the car number one. The like car number one. That's like a gorilla. Yeah, this one right here. Like a why? Okay, so yeah, why do you think this is a carnivore? First off, because, it's, because it's, teeth. Teeth. it's teeth. Do you think it just eats meat? No, no. it can eat plants. Too. Okay, so we would not call that carnivore. We call that an omnivore. Omnivore. Okay. Omnivore. All right. Yeah, and so so because if you look at our skulls, we don't have these gigantic, awesome teeth. You saw this dude in a, in a, in a dark alley? I would go the other way. I guarantee you, right now. All right. All right. No, but good. the thing is, look how big his incisors are. Right. Remember, the incisors are there to to cut. Incisors are basically like knives. Um, the canines. Our, our canines actually are not, the reason why our canines are so much smaller now is because uh, canines are actually just there to inflict damage. They're not really there to cut anything, okay? Canines are more like um, just pokey, like little stabby folks. Right? Well, yeah. Like the now, um, the, our teeth also, just like those ones, just like how y'all noticed, these, this is an omnivore. Um, so it does, is it does have the ability to break down plants because, again, we have lots and lots of molars, and those molars are there. To, to crush, okay? Um, what do you think is number two? The one with smaller, um, smaller. Yeah, number two. The one with the, no, not the that one? Do, uh, we, would we classify all these as omnivores? Yeah. Probably. I mean, they all have incisors, well, yeah, naturally. Okay? So, yeah, we can all class them as omnivores. Um, what do you all think number two is, though? A monkey. 
You think it's a monkey? There's, there are no monkey hominids. Wait, are, monkeys gorilla. go a different class. What? Some type of gorilla. Some type of gorilla? In the gorilla family. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your protractor. Right? <laughs> yep, you should have a protractor somewhere on your desk. You're going to take your protractor. Okay, now. It should be protractors. Should be two protractors per group of desks. So you're gonna take your protractor, and y'all see right here where? Does he right here at the very tip of the skull, or right at, right at the very tip of the eyebrow, right? Okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your protractor, and I'll put it up on the board. Is that the idea is that you can take these structures right here? Okay, you can take these measurements. You can take you take these measurements. Uh, the structures that, that you'll find in the forelimbs, the structures you'll find in the you know intestinal tract, whatever structure it is. Okay, and you can make those kind of trees together. So here's your actual answers. Number one is actually a gorilla. Number two is a chimpanzee. Yeah, go and write this. Number three is Homo erectus. Um, again, remember those are the ones that did come before Homo sapiens. Uh, four would be your, your standard Neanderthal, the one that people think, oh, that's a caveman, or grug, smash, right? <laughs> right so that would be homo Neanderthal, nemesis, blah, blah, blah. Uh, number three would just be homo erectus. Um, there is no common name for homo erectus. We just call him homo erectus. Why is gorilla gorilla? Um, so that specific gorilla, that's just what you call it. Like, there's, there's certain animals that you just, the genus is also the species name as well. And again, remember, we're, we're, we're writing these in italics, or if y'all, you're mm -hmm. writing them in capital letter, you can't write in italics because it's, not, it's, not it's a type font. Um, so you would capitalize the first one, you would lowercase the second one, um, and then you can just write them in the common names too, that's fine. Um, and then, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, um, and then also for y'all, if you're handwriting, you would underline the scientific name. And why do we go with the scientific name? Either one, just to write either one is fine. Um, whichever one makes more sense to you. Um, but why? But why do we? Why do we do something like the uh, the Latin form? Why don't we just do like gorilla and chimpanzee and stuff like that? Because science is speaking. Because they're really close. And where they come from? Yeah. And also, remember I talked about the whole like Texas blue bonnet and the. The uh, the British blue bonnet. No. 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 Is there British blue bonnet? Yeah. So there's no. there's there's your guy right there, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. There's the the artist rendition of Orzinge, Australopithecus. Um, but no, this is what I was talking to. I, I swear I drew this picture for y'all. I said I said that that I was sending some research paper off to a a, a, a friend of mine in Cambridge. And I said, you know what I did? I took these blue bonnets and, I, and we genetically modified them and, and turned them purple. Or, sorry, turned them red. Okay? So, so and, and he's like, awesome. So you made, and so he comes back and he draws me a picture like this and he sends it back to me. And I'm like, there's, I, I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not a blue bonnet. I said, and so I send him back another picture. We're doing this all in like a little Snapchat going on. Right? And so I draw him this picture. No, it's not. I, I never tell you all lies. Right? And I said to him, that, that picture, he goes, he goes, wait, wait, no, 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 this is a blue bonnet. I say, no, this is a blue bonnet. It's an ah, uh, it's an ah. Uh. Right? And so we go back and forth like that for a while, like we're four-year-olds. Um, but then I realize, oh, wait, 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 wait. You're not talking about Lupinus texicanus. And they're like, oh, that's true. We're not talking about the Texas lupine. I'm only talking about the, the British blue bell. So... Using common names can be confusing if you're not if that's not your common dialect. Okay, so we use uh, we use uh, um, scientific names. Almost. Okay. So that's the idea. Okay. Um, now can we? Now I did give you. I did kind of tell you a little bit of a lie. Well, that one. That whole story was a lie, by the way. Um, yeah, totally. Um, I'll tell you right now. You guys You're going to go to hell. Uh, no. I'm not ever going to test what you're doing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing is that 
that you know I said can you put these in order remember remember how we had like the the whale and the split like that from the pig yeah right so there was no like oh this is card number one this is card number two three four you know whatever where it didn't it didn't split like that wait if we have a test on this is it gonna have the whales in the in the pig hey, on the one pastors. that we drew if you had pigs and humans say it again you have pigs and humans on this one it's okay it's okay remember we drew that one before we had more information so did you want us to change it no just leave it alone I just want you to know I understand the idea of the concept. That's so I can go both ways? Correct. I just want you to be able to read it and be like, this is what the information is. Um, but what I'm saying is that like these cards, they don't go in order like this. Okay? Um, they actually go in, in order something to this idea that basically, you know, you're eventually going to branch off and those branches will actually branch off as well. Okay? Like the things like, um, you know, your, your, homo, your homo erectus, what, which one was Homo erectus? Three. Three? You know, Homo, uh, sorry, Homo erectus might be something like that, whereas, oops. And then from Homo erectus, there might be, which one's Homo sapien? Five? Five. Five. It might be something like that. To where there's a development, but it's not a linear development. It actually will, will branch off, and then that will branch off from there. Okay? To where there's a common ancestor right there. Okay. So there's not really a correct linear term frame here, but, but I do, what I do want you to see is, do you, do you all agree with this idea that they're all related? Yes. Yes. That there's a lot of similarities between this? Even though their faces are changing and their case sizes are getting bigger and their jawline is getting bigger or smaller, there's a lot of similarities here. And that was the idea with the last time as well, where we looked at the bone structure, how there's similarities between the different bone structures, even though they're different animals and they live different ways and they use them for different reasons, um, there's some sim differences. Okay. Um, so the idea is that, that not only can we look at fossils, we can look at structural uh, components, we can look at similarities within the structural components, we can look at skull lines, and we can take all those evolutionary trees. We can also do the same thing with DNA. Yeah. Okay? Because, um, refresh my memory, DNA, we take, we take DNA, right? And what about DNA? What do we know about DNA? It's what? In the nucleus. Okay, it's in the nucleus. What else? What else? It's doubled. It's a double helix. It, it looks cool. It transfers. What happens if it's um, single? It's an RNA piece. You know, you can modify it. Okay. Um, so we, we, we can copy it it's pretty much exactly, right? <laughs> okay. It's like a base for RNA. Okay, it's made of nucleotides? It's, um, I don't know. Dude, we should have like like a spider DNA on like us and it's Spider Man. <laughs> it's like Where's the base for RNA. We can code it. Sir. What? Exactly. Everybody has specific. I'm gonna take a while. I'm listening to you. It's like, it's like in, it's a base for RNA. Okay, good. Yeah, it is a base for RNA. All right. So, so DNA is in the nucleus. It is a double helix. Um, it does copy exactly using DNA replication. It's made nucleotides. Remember, nucleotide was the phosphate, sugar, and nitrogen base. Um, that makes up a nucleic acid. Nucleic acid. No, it's a good stuff. Nucleic acid. Um, and what are the four base pairs here? T, A, A T, C, and G. C, and G. Okay. G cat, right? Um, so it has all those components, and then DNA will can trans transcribe to RNA, and then we take RNA, we can then transcribe that or translate that to a bunch of what? Protein. Yeah. Well, you actually make a bunch of amino acids, and the amino acids make proteins, right? Okay. So this is the idea, is that, is that our DNA is really special, right? Like, our DNA is no different. Like, our DNA is way different than anyone else, and that's the reason why we're, like, the primary species. Is that correct? Yeah. No. Wait, no. Yeah, like, our DNA has nothing. Like, it, it's like, we've got, like, way more than that DNA. Like, everyone else's DNA is crap. Yeah. Right? No, it's because totally. no, God made Wait, what? Don't we have similar Actually, we have exactly the same DNA. Yeah. The components of DNA for us, the components of DNA for cows, the components of DNA for platypi, the components of DNA for cacti, and the components of DNA for bacteria, or bacteria, um, are exactly the same. So just because we find ourselves to be the premier species, blah, 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 whatever you want to call it, all right, does not mean that our DNA is any different. And our DNA is not, since our DNA is the same, that means our RNA is going to be the same, and our proteins are going to be the same. Okay. Hence, 
Hence this sheet right here. Okay? This is the amino acid sequence for something called cytochrome C. You remember how do we make uh, ATP? Mm -hmm. uh, what would that be? That was a question. What process do we go through to make ATP? Cellular respiration. Very good. And we find, we do cellular respiration where? In the what? Lungs. No, uh, no, we breathe in the lungs, but cellular respiration. Mitochondria. All right. So we go to the mitochondria, we do cellular respiration, and remember we had to breathe in because the pyruvate get into the club, it's got to bring what with it? Oxygen. All right. So to get in the club, we're going to bring in oxygen, and the oxygen is going to carry our electrons through the electron transport chain. And one part of the electron transport chain is called cytochrome C. That's where all this relates. Okay? Cytochrome C is found in humans. It's found in, it's found in cattle. It's found in um, monkeys. It's found in platypi. It's found in yeast. Would it? Yeah, yeast. Like the little, the little bugs that like, uh, not bugs, the little fungi that help you make bread and, and the ginger ale that we made and all that stuff. Okay. Now, would we find cytochrome C? Here's, here's your advanced level question. Would we find cytochrome C in bacteria? Yes. No. no, that's a trick question. Because remember, I said cytochrome C is found where? Where do we do cell respiration? In the mitochondria. Bacteria don't, don't have, it. have it. Good. Bacteria do not have mitochondria, so in essence, it does not have cytochrome C. But it is found in horses, chickens, tunas, frogs, humans, sharks, turtles, monkeys, rabbits, and even the occasional platypi. All right? Um, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to take a color. Yeah, we should have a class pit of a pad, 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 that'd be awesome. All right, so you're going to take a, a, some kind of color, whatever you want to do, circle it, highlight it, whatever you want to do. And you'll see right there where it says human. You'll see where it says human in the middle. Make that noticeable, okay? Highlight it, mark it, make it bold. The, the middle line says human. You'll see in the very middle. It's box, but it's hard to see, especially when you're in the... Middle looking line for line. Yeah, so just, just color across, but don't color it so dark where you cannot see the words. Okay, so you can highlight it or, or circle it or do something that makes sure you know that it's there. Okay. Now, uh, that would be a blue highlighter. <laughs> because it's a bright blue. It's fancy blue. It's a baby blue. Oh, All right. So the reason why we're highlighting the middle one is because what you're going to do is you're going to compare the human amino acid to the horse, chicken, donkey, mule, shark, whatever tuna um, <laughs> amino acid. Okay, because again, we all have the same cytochrome C, and so cytochrome C is basically made exactly the same no matter what species you have, but let's, like, I'll help you with the first one. So you'll see it down there on the bottom of the box. It says horse. Mm -hmm. We're going to find the number of differences between horse. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to look at, see, there's the first one says GLN, and that one says GLN. Okay, that's the same. And this one says PRO, PRO, PHE. Oh, that's TYR. All right, so I'm going to make a little mark right here on C to remind me that that's one difference. And then on D, that's the difference. And then, uh, let's see, H, I, J, L, L? no, K. K is the difference. J, yes, J is the difference. So, on, that's it, A on human F. You go through, and I think I got them all. Did I get them all? One, two, three, four, I'm missing one. Which one am I missing? M. So you go through and you mark all the differences. Okay, circle them, mark them, whatever you need to do. And then you down here and you put down, I have five differences. Okay. And you do that for the chicken and for the tuna and for the frog and for the shark and for the turtle and for the monkey. Simple as that, right? Yeah. All right, that's step number one. Flip on the back. Let me show you step number two. Write this down. So again, you're going to find the differences in the front and then you're going to put them in numerical order on the back. Okay, so whoever has two and then four, so take the numbers that were on the front sheet, this sheet right here, okay, take those numbers and then put them in numerical order on the back, and then list the organisms down that row. Okay, so this will be in numerical order. Here's the reason why you're going to do that. You all see down on the bottom, right there? On the bottom, then you take, 
You take whoever's at two, which y'all want to go and take a guess at what's two differences between us and the other creature? Yeah. So you take two and you say monkey. Monkey. All right? And y'all, if y'all see on the very bottom, and I've, I've, I've cut it off, but y'all see on the very bottom how it says zero, and then there's five, and there's ten, and there's fifteen, and the lines match up, there's probably going to be a two, and there's probably going to be a, a four or something like that, and there's probably going to be a six and a seven and an eight, and then there's going to be a ten, and there's going to be a, a thirteen, a fourteen. You see how that works? So what you're doing is you're making your own phylogenetic tree based on DNA. Okay? Once you make the tree, then answer the few questions on the bottom. There are a couple questions. Y'all see right here, there's questions right here and right here. Let me help you with number two. It says, which organism is most closely related to humans? Am I looking for a big number or a little number for closely related? Little. 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 So most likely, what are you going to put there? Monkeys. Monkeys. I'll give you the answer right now. All right? M-O-N-K-E-S. What? E-Y-S. Yes. So the closely related would be the smallest. And then what's the most distant related? Or least closely? Well, what number are we looking for? A little big, big number or a little number? Big number. Big number. All right, so basically the bottom of that list, right? Okay. So, again, this is another form of evidence evolution, the idea that we all have basically the same DNA. It's just very, very uh, slight differences in the types of DNA that we have. Okay.